Hey everybody, welcome to Geekaholics Anonymous, episode 214. I'm your host, Rico, here with my co-host... What's up everybody? This is Dane Cody. This is episode 214. What is happening? We got a great show happening today. <laughs> oh yeah. Excellent show. Excellent That's what I'm talking about. The best show. This is going to be the best show. You don't even know. It's it's going to be so I've, good. I've only had to restart three times. All right. But they don't know that. Now they know that. Wait, way to go. See? <laughs> like putting made stuff curtain behind. It's the access they pay for. Yes. Wait. Oh, wait. They don't pay anything. God damn it. We get together once a week. Talk about video games, TV, movies, and or whatever the hell we like. Welcome, everyone. Um, if you've never been here before, I'll give you a little rundown of how the show works. Run we away. usually start off a little BS section, which we are knee-deep in right now. Get into some house cleaning. <laughs> Go over the games me and Dane have been playing uh, over the last week since we last talked. Get into some news and stuff. Public service announcements and our free for all section. Free for all. Um, Dane. Yo, what up, homie G? Do you have anything exciting to share from your weekend? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, like, man. Went down to a sandcastle competition in the U.S. Oh yeah, fun. I saw your tweets about you bitching about. Oh, the, the traffic was horrible. American traffic in the. Oh, border. dude, it was so bad. It was so bad. It was awful. We waited like two hours plus to like get down there on Sunday. It was awful. Just to get over the border? Yep. It's stupid. Where was this sandcastle contest? Birch Bay. Just across the border on the other side. Oh, so it's not like you had you didn't have like a huge trek once you got across. No, no, it was getting across just... the border was longer than getting exactly. to the destination. Yeah, it was stupid. Like a lot longer than than like getting to the destination, so was but it was fun. Huge? Was it cool? Yeah, it was nice. It was fun. My my wife's work does like a thing every year where they like participate in the sandcastle competition. So we went down there and like hung out and helped out with the sandcastle and got sunburned and enjoyed some beer on the beach. And, nice. Yeah, it was fun. It was cool. They do like a little festival down there and stuff. So so it was uh, it was a good time. You know, they had like a bad local band playing like old music that they thought was cool and. <laughs> Everybody was like kind of, you know, it was like funny. It was like all the younger people were totally not paying attention really at all. But like there was all the older people were like super into it, you know, and there <coughs> at one point there was some, some guy, he must've been, I don't know if I had to guess, he's probably in his like late fifties, maybe his early sixties, um, no shirt, nipples pierced, long hair, just wow. sunburnt like crazy, yeah. just out there, just rocking out, you know. He's probably on something, I have no idea, but he, he loved it. I mean, he was, he was having, having a, good a time. really good time. I um, almost for, I almost forgot. Uh, yeah, I went to the Deuce Days here. The Deuce Days? Yeah. Drop is that where deuce? they poop? No. <laughs> I was like, like, is this uh, like a poop festival? Because that sounds gross. No, it's a Ford Deuce like meetup. It's like the biggest one in like North America. Like the Ford nineteen thirty two Ford Deuce or something. Is it thirty two something like that? Oh, okay. Like, like a car well, show. They, yeah, they had like almost fourteen hundred cars come from all over the place, basically shut down downtown Victoria. That's pretty cool. It was cool. It was freaking awesome. Were they all like old classics? Like was it was like a show and shine more or less? 1932s. I believe yeah. that. I just meant it. like was it like was there like a whole bunch of other cars that also like cuz a lot of times there when... was some there was some <laughs> other cars that were not deuces but okay. primarily it was Oh, okay. it was all deuces. But cuz like awesome. you know a lot of times you go to like a, I go to Cars and Coffee or something like Porsche and like there's lots of Porsches there yeah. but there's also there like a no, ton of other it was cars, all... right? It was all classic cars. Okay, yeah. That's, so that's kind of what I figured. Like, I'd say 90% of them were deuces, and then the rest, you know, there was like, you know, 57 Chevys and other, like, classics, like right. super old school classic cars there. Old Corvettes. There's so and many. Camaros. And- They're crazy, like, how much effort and detail, like, you know how guys, like, those classic cars, some of them are, like, themed and oh yeah, crazy paint jobs or insane totally. customizations. Yep. It was it was cool. Right on, man. That's cool. Yeah, that was neat. And That's then a lot it, of fun. It led into uh, what we're going to talk about here in our what you've been playing. 
Oh, I thought we were going to talk about the new Corvette for a second. And then oh. we like, both sit here and go, holy shit, how sweet is that thing? I guess we can talk it's about the new Corvette C8 if you really 2020 want to. Corvette. That thing is a game changer. Just yeah, it look does, at it. it it's does so look pretty. pretty cool. For starting at under seventy thousand Canadian, that is a lot of performance for that for that price, and the that'll way be, it looks that, too. That, like it's that's, that'll be my midlife oh, crisis car. It's a good looking piece of kit. Like that's mo- probably that's probably supplanted the GTR for the best bang for a buck. Oh yeah, oh by far, because the GTR now is like one hundred forty grand Canadian or something. Like it's it's yeah. very expensive, right? So that being you know zero to sixty in under three seconds mid-engine rear drive it's it it's looks a sharp crazy. looking ride yeah like it when they announced it i was like holy crap like I, i've never really su- been into corvettes super limited like, like why is it so inexpensive are they just trying to make a play for that market or just like no fuck i think everybody like, take thing? i think it's gonna be like similar to the current corvette right like you can buy like the Corvette Stingray starting a little bit less than that, but pretty similar price to that. And then of course from there they're you know, they'll do the Z fifty one and the Z R one down the road. Like they'll have higher end versions of it, mm-hmm. just like just like now. Um that'll it probably crazy. go it's upwards. Such a powerful car is like <laughs> well, I mean the current vet so is affordable. Like almost 500 horse to start right like it's a mm. the corvette's always been a pretty good bang for buck it's just that now i feel like the looks really go along with it like it, oh, it looks it like an exotic looks, supercar yeah, like more looks, so than the past versions yeah it it looks like something wild like ferrari was doing like i guarantee you the first few of these that are going to go driving around people are going to think they're ferraris yeah they're pretty sharp it does kind of have that enzo kind of body yeah, kind of very like angular. It looks a lot like a Corvette from the very back. If you see it from the back, you're like, yeah. oh yeah, that's a Corvette for sure. But, but like, like the, the side, side and the front profile, mm-hmm. you're like, holy cow, that. <sighs> so yeah, no, <coughs> excuse me. It's uh, I, it just, I think it's you know, I'm, I'm a little disappointed because it's going to be the first Corvette that they're not offering with a manual transmission. But oh, I know oh, for oh, most oh, people oh, they don't care. I care. I think it sucks because <laughs> that's always been like a big, a big thing that they offer. Um, and it is cool because it is naturally aspirated as well right now. So it's, uh, I'm super excited to see like reviews and stuff of it. I want to see one in the flesh. So I have to buy a couple of lottery tickets and maybe we can cruise down and race them. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I did Deuce Days. You did Sandcastle. We also went went to go feed ducks at the park, oh. which leads into my watch you been playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was playing Pokemon Go this weekend. I saw. I've always been playing. Po- been I Pokemon, mean, you've been, been yeah. playing Pokemon Go, but I was I like, just, you didn't stop playing Pokemon Go, really, right? No, but I happened to be like downtown during like a community event, or like they have the community days every month. Okay, which is for like three hours um you can catch a certain pokemon spawns like crazy increased chance of shiny yada, is that yada, what they yada. call like a raid or is a raid different no raids different okay the the raids are what happens randomly at different gyms oh okay you get like raid pokemons which are usually legendaries or like more powerful that you need to take down with a bunch of people so then, does everybody that it, like participates get one of the legendaries? No, you have to capture it. Oh, everyone really? Everyone participates in beating it. So interesting. But so can, only get, person, get... can only one person can only one person capture it though? No, everyone that beats him has a chance to catch it. Oh, okay. So I'll get to that in one second. So Mudkip was the creature. I caught a buttload of them. I didn't get any shinies. But like four o'clock rolled around and I happened to be in Beacon Hill Park, which is like so out of curiosity, sorry. What's special about a shiny? And I mean It's a different colored right it's a Is it a palette a, swap? Yeah, pretty much. And sometimes does they it come with sparkle? Di- uh it does sparkle. Oh. Okay. And it does have like different it can sometimes have different abilities. Um, it's more that it's like, Hey, look at me. I'm super rare and you I'm don't a have me. giant nerd and you don't have one. Yeah. Like, All right. I think I can't remember. It's like a one and no, I'm not even going to say it. It's a big one in something ratio of getting them. They're not common. 
Okay. So they increase the chances of this one type of Pokemon to be in shiny. Not a big deal. It's just whatever. Right. But, um, so then does every Pokemon have a shiny version? Most. I don't think everyone does. I think most do. So and in Pokemon like- Go, not every Pokemon has a shiny version. Like as they do updates and patches and community days, that's when they sometimes add shiny versions of ones that they haven't had yet. Hmm. So it's like an albino Pokemon. Yeah. Pretty ex- much the ex- same thing, just a different ex- exact color. Exactly. So anyway, I'm like playing a little, like we're leaving the car show. Uh, Beacon Hill Park in Victoria is like, I'm just going to equate it to Central Park. It's our Central Park. <laughs> okay. It's it's the big pretty park in downtown Victoria with like docks and a petting zoo and rose garden and bridges and outside entertainment and all kinds of neat little nooks and crannies. Right. And it's it's quite big. It's a wicked, it's a nice walk. Um. And it also happens to be like a huge like Pokemon like gyms and uh, right you know. yeah yeah there's and, like a bunch of Pokestops yeah and everything yeah. Pokestops tons of Pokemon like right. spawning and like four o'clock rolled around and I just like just noticed I'm like what the hell's there's like tons of people playing like groups like there's literally. There happened to be a Mewtwo armored Mewtwo, which is like the rare raid uh, Pokemon right now. Is he shiny? I guess you can get a shiny version of him. Oh, oh! So I, there's a separate version of him that I don't know shiny. if he's. I don't know if he comes shiny, but basically he's a raid Pokemon, and you have to beat him in a raid. And it's like, okay, he happened to spawn at the gym in the middle of the park where we were by the playground, and it's like literally. Like, a couple hundred people, like, descended on it. And I'm like, holy crap, this game is still huge. Like, at least in terms of on a community day, there was, like, young people, old people. Yeah. Like, there was an old man with, like, two phones playing. There's a bunch yeah. of people. I saw a bunch of people with, like, three cell phones playing, <laughs> like, running alt accounts, which is They were crazy. probably playing Pokemon Go and Harry Potter together. Nah, I didn't That's... see anyone play Harry Potter, but anyway. I don't believe you. I, um... Managed to jump in on a raid, caught myself an armored uh, Mewtwo on my last Pokeball. Oh. Thank God. Because what happens in a raid, everyone jumps in. I don't know what the player limit is, but I think there's a player limit at some point. Okay. Basically, everyone just fights them all at once. And when you beat them, depending on how much damage or which team of the three did the most damage, you get bonus Pokeballs. And Anyway, I had like, I think I got... nine pokeballs to throw at him right because it gives you a separate like you earn the pokeballs for capturing raid monsters you don't you just can't use your own supply like oh i see i have hundreds of pokeballs so it's like you get it depending on performance right so i had nine balls i caught him on my last one you with your Mr. Nine Balls. I know. I was pretty happy I caught him because if you lose, you can't just do the raid again. You have to go to a different raid. Oh, really? Yeah. But I was... Shit. It was awesome. I was blown away by how many people there were. My wife just thought I was a super nerd. I could uh, see your wife standing there looking at you going like shaking and, your head slightly. And I was like, talking to people fuck? there and... I'm gonna say, man, if I was a single young nerd, I'd be going to these Pokemon communities. There was, I've been telling quite, my brother this. There was he quite a few uh... freaking pretty <laughs> nerdy girls. If I if I wasn't married, I w- I would have been swinging hard. There was a well, lot of really cute girls at this thing, man. And I was like, <laughs> wow, I was I was impressed. Anyway, <laughs> all right. Um, I know I was even more surprising besides the hundreds of people being there. But there was actually yeah. nor- normal people there too. I mean, I'm it was not a lot surprised of fun. It was though. Cool. Like, it was I know so Pokemon random. Go is very much a big game still. Yeah, it was like a, it felt like a flash mob or something. <laughs> There's still an awful lot of people on my Twitter feed and stuff that talk about it. So, I mean, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not that surprised that you. Uh, yeah, managed so that was neat. To do that, and, but you know, I totally didn't uh, plan on doing that. Right. Or I may have planned to do that, <laughs> but I didn't think it was going to be that busy. I just was like, oh, we walk around downtown. I'll catch a bunch of shinies. I didn't even figure that there would be a million people around to do the raid. Right. Um, and it just all worked out. Everyone won. And my wife had no idea that I kind of planned that on purpose. 
Uh, I'm we surprised really she didn't just be like, okay, let's get the hell out of here now. Like, let's go. Like, I'm she surprised that, cause like, how long did you have to like stand there and like try not to very fight long. this thing? It literally no? took like five minutes to do the raid, not even. Oh, wow. That, yeah, it I'm didn't take long. It's that quick. I would have thought it was like, I don't know, at least 15, 20 minutes or something. No, no, it didn't take very long. <laughs> um, my daughter was running around feeding the ducks. So, oh, okay. She so was it wasn't more than like, entertained. They weren't gotcha. even ready. To, when I was done, they still weren't even ready to leave. Gotcha. They're um, like, okay, it's time for me to roll. And they're like, but I'm still feeding ducks. Yeah, she was having a blast. It was pretty hilarious. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that's it. And then uh, we both played Tetris Effect. Fuck I yeah, played it already. I own it on PSVR, and it's awesome. Yeah, I... Uh... So I it's it came out on the Epic Store. It's it's there now on PC. You can you can go buy it. It's and, exclusive. Uh, it's fucking good. Exclusive. So it looks pretty on the PC. Dude, I like it's really funny when I started playing so I I started playing it last night cuz it came out yesterday. Um and I was like, "Oh man, I'll check this out." So so I was like I installed it and I was like getting ready to play and like I I loaded it up and I I adjusted, you know, settings and things like that so that it actually fit my screen and so on and so forth and uh and then i started playing it and i was like the screen was so big and then like the the field felt really small and i was like huh this is kind of weird like i feel like it should be bigger because i have a big monitor and like but then as i started playing it (laughs) then as like as it like because of course it starts off really kind of chill and slow and like yeah (laughs) And then as I started playing it more and more, I realized that, like, all that extra space is all these, like, crazy visual effects that, like, go with the music. And, like, oh, my gosh. I got sucked in so hard last night. Oh, the music's Um, so good, too. Oh, my gosh. Like, I will be trying to find that that soundtrack. It is freaking so good. So imagine Um, as awesome as it is on PC in how vr co- how cool it is in vr i can only imagine that whole yeah. just all that stuff surrounding you 360 degrees oh man that would be rad see and like now i kind of want to buy it on ps like ps4 so i can play it on my psvr i think it's only 20 bucks on uh oh man on but then i have to start right all over <laughs> and i'm already at like level 12 or whatever and i'm like yeah ah. you get there in no time no, it's, it's an true. awesome game. I really liked it. That's why I bought it on PSVR. Yeah, like I said, I knew it was kind of like like I mean, I posted it on our Discord or whatever. I was like, I know this is old news, but like I'm coming into this for the first time, and mm-hmm. holy shit, this is it's so, so good. good. Like this is shit. More people should play this because it. Yeah. Like yes, it's Tetris, but the music and the way like there's even some levels where so you're, chill, you're pulling though, too, you're pulling a like, block down, like, and like the the sound that it makes when you're spinning the block adds to the music so it's like do 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 yeah stunk do 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 yeah the effects like, are it's like just, oh, it's, hi-hats or and then sound as effects, it starts to like you know and then the, the the game music like starts to kind of fill in the blanks and like oh man it reacts just, to what you're doing totally and then like some of it starts off like super slow and chill and you're like oh this is great and then as you get going like suddenly like the speed increases because the tempo of the music gets going, but then it slows back down again. And like, did oh. you uh, did you do the tutorial? Uh, I think so. Like, I did. Like, like it asked so me, like, oh, do you want to do? You the know t- how to do the zone? Mechanic yeah, thing? yeah. And like, you hit the zone, and it like allows you to essentially do as many like bank a bunch of blocks in a specific yeah. amount of time for like a bunch of bonus <laughs> points. Yeah, it's super cool. Uh, it's a really neat, really neat idea. I, um, it's got like so much, it, like it has so much uh, inspiration from like Luminous and like Res. This actually made me really want to like pull out my Vita and download Luminous. <laughs> I was like, oh man, I could, did I you could ever, really go for some Luminous now. Did you ever get Res? Um, I didn't actually on the PSVR. No, oh, I, I've man. heard really good things. Oh, I've heard, oh, I've heard same really, guys. Yeah, I've heard it's really hard. Actually, uh, nah, it's not hard. Know. No. That's an experience. You're going to feel like you're on drugs when you're not on drugs <laughs> and have awesome music. Dude, you're not selling it. <laughs> but I will say the visuals on PC with the oh, higher resolution. Oh, yeah, man. I had that shit crank. It, it, it's, very, it's very pretty. 
I had uh, like and they I was also doing. Wide. Thank you. I was also doing resolution scaling, so I was actually doing like almost. So it scales it. It it actually renders it double and then scales it down to the to your actual monitor. Mm-hmm. So so I did like I started at 150 times. So instead of 100 times would be like your exact resolution. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, so I scaled it up almost like in between uh, 1440p and 4K. And then it scales it down. So you get even more of the, like that crispness and stuff. And, uh, mm. and beca- like if you have the horsepower or whatever, it just it looks I didn't play with any so of the settings. I was, you got to always play with the settings, man. Come on. You're on PC. You got to no, get in there. And, I ain't no PC nor- nerd dork. Shut your face. I resemble that statement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Tetris Effect is dope. Go get it. It's really good. If you didn't have a PSVR, check it out on the Epic Game Store. Yeah, exclusive, exclusive. Um, you beat Bloodstain, I see. In the I show did, notes? I did. I, nice. I finally, I finally got out there and did that. That was the good ending, right? The, yes, the actual good ending this time. So finally. Uh, I think I was at 99%, uh, like 99.2 or something like that was like my, my final kind of whatever. Um, I do have a few of the, like the millionaire and like, there's a few of the different rooms that you yeah, have to find keys for. Optional um, bosses. <clears throat> so I have those keys. I accidentally stumbled into one of them. I think it was the carpenter fight or something. Um, I accidentally stumbled into that battle and died. And then I was like, shit, I'll, I'll have to come back to this later. And then I, you know, so I kind of, there's a few things that I can kind of go back and, and do. Yeah. Um, I need to go find walls that I haven't broken. Cause I think I've gotten every room. Right. And I'm just like, uh, I'm like, I gotta wait until one of the new characters or some of the deals or some of the updates happen and then I'll go play it again. Yeah, so like that was that was kind of my thing. I was like I was like looking at it and I was going like, well, I guess I could go and and like do this and be done with it or whatever, but I'll I don't know. I'll I'll leave a little bit. My final game clock I think was like 25 hours. So I was a little off when we were talking about it on the podcast. I thought I had long, like more for some reason. I noticed that my in-game clock was was a bit different than my Steam clock. Like my Steam clock was like showing something like thirty, almost thirty hours, mm-hmm. like twenty nine or something like that. And yet my in-game, like my actual in-game clock, was, was showing higher. as no, it was lower by quite oh. a bit. It was showing as like twenty, like I said, like twenty five. It was like twenty four, like almost twenty five hours. I noticed the time kept rolling on that one when you were in like in the menu. Oh really? Did you notice that? Yeah, like I noticed that if you were in the menu or if you were at the um the map, the time continued to roll. So like it didn't like truly pause. I hate it yeah. when it does that. Yeah, but like I said, it was odd that the steam clock would be higher. Yeah, like, steam clock is so weird. I can never. Tr- yeah. Excuse me. Never trust it. Yeah. So, anyways, um, so yeah, so I did, I did beat it. I did you get did the, it. the ending. Uh, that game. It's, it's fantastic. Awesome. It's it's really really good. Um, the the end boss, like I definitely there was a f- like I, you know, it, it took me a few tries. Like initially, I definitely was not. It sounds like not nearly as leveled up and like kind of I overpowered was so, as I was as so you. OP at the end. I had no um, problems because I didn't I didn't spend a ton of t- like it was actually funny. Like it wasn't only it was probably halfway through the game or more till I finally started actually like investing in. Like some of my shards and stuff, like I like I put a lot of time into my passive shards, yeah, but I didn't put a ton of, of stuff into my active shards. Yeah. So like it was actually funny. Like I ended up like beating the final boss, and I had like the the two shards or something that I was kind of using to to beat him or it or whatever you want to the end boss. And like I think I had like one of them was like level two or three, and the other one was Ugh. like three or four like that's that's what i mean like, right like i just I hadn't um well because there was so many of them like, oh, i know there's like <laughs> and so like i i think for me i was like well i don't know which one of these i'm gonna keep using so i'll i'll, I'll you know i'll sort of play around with them and then when i find something i really like i'll, I'll invest in it and then i just kind of kept jumping all over the place and yeah i don't know so um but no i nice. feel like there's definitely like if you're if you were not 
done with that. Like if you hadn't oh, kind of got so your much. fill, there's definitely a lot of stuff to kind of oh, go there's back. There's so much and, to do. There's so many like shards I can unlock. There's some stuff that I haven't even found. Like I accidentally stumbled upon the eight bit. There's there's like a secret eight bit eight, level. Eight bit nightmare. Yeah, and I totally accidentally stumbled upon that, um, not intending to, um, and then promptly died. And again, <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll come back to this later when I actually mean to. Do you remember uh, what um, level you were? Uh, when I finished, I was level 46, I want to say. Oh, okay, yeah, I think I was like 60 or 70 something. Yeah, so yeah. Pretty like, redonkulously highly leveled. Yeah, I don't know. Is there, does anybody know, is that like a cap of 99, I'm assuming? I feel like it goes up to 100. Yeah. It's 99. I know there's an achievement to hit 50, so um, that was kind of, I mean, I figured, I wasn't sure if maybe that was the end or if it just let you keep going. I I don't know. Um, But no, it's just really, really good, uh, especially on PC. Like, I... You know, it's funny, I was, like, listening to other podcasts and stuff, and people are like, yeah, you know, I got it on Switch, and, like, and I just, I felt so bad, because I was, like, you know, similar to you, you, you got it on the Switch, and you were just like, wow, this is, woof, this is, whew, this is rough, um, and so, and they were, they were running into a similar problem that, that we've, you know, seen with, with some of our uh, friends on our Discord and, and other things like that, where, they kind of wanted to keep playing, but they didn't want to keep playing because they were hoping that there was going to be some patches that were going to come out to like, hopefully, you know, sort of relegate some of these issues yeah. that, that were there, which kind of sucks because by the time, you know, now the, the, who knows how long that's going to take. So now yeah, they're kind of sitting there going like, going to be a while still. Um, so now it's like sitting in a weird spot for them where they're like, I want to play it, but by the time those come out, am I still going to want to play it? Or is there going to be a bajillion other games out, right? Like for me, it came out at the perfect time. Like there wasn't a ton of other games that were like dropping every other week or anything like that. So I could take the time over like the course of a few weeks to actually play through and beat it, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, will I go back to it? Probably not just because of the vast amount of games that are out there that I currently own that I have access to between games that I own and game pass and like just Ugh. all of everything. It's just like, fuck, there's so get many fro- games. I get frozen lately <laughs> trying to figure out what I want to play. Yeah. There's definitely That's been, times I always where go back to down. my stupid comfort food. There's definitely times where I sit down at my PC and I'm like, all right, what am I going to play? And I look at all the games I have installed and then I look at all the games that I could install. And, and then, then like, like, I'm going to play nothing. Yeah, and then I get up and like go watch TV or something. Um, or like you said, or I play Dauntless, or I play, you know, um, some Smite or or something that I, you know, it just yeah. Um, it's definitely definitely a problem. But um, yeah, I'll speaking get back. of speaking of your crack, I jumped in on the weekend hmm. thinking like, oh man, Destiny Two, the perfect game to like try out my new monitor on. Like this will be awesome. It's so, like, awesome. I jumped in and like loaded it up and I got 500 different like screens at the beginning saying like this is a thing that's happening and this is a thing that's happening and check this shit out and this is new and that's open and blah blah blah. And then I got a bunch of stuff and then I'm not going to lie like I got into the game and I was like now what the fuck do I do? Where do I go? What should I be doing now? Like yeah. I, I don't know like <laughs> you know, I, I went into my like pursuits or whatever, and it's I like wonder... a full page, and it's just full of pursuits. Oh, it could be and I'm like, like multiple pages. Uh, yeah, and I'm like, okay, well, do I like? But they're do not I really they're not one well organized, like... and it's not immediately obvious what the best thing to do is. Totally, and I like wonder... I had like I had one or two things uh, that got me like super high level gear, right? Like, so I went like right off the bat, I got like two pieces of like six ninety gear. Um, and I was like, oh, that's cool. So I got like a 690 gun and a piece of armor. I'm like, sweet. Now, yeah. how do I, how do I get the rest of this? There's like, a whole quest you know what line. I mean? There's like, multiple steps for that one. So you just got to go back and figure out what pursuit it is. Right. But which pursuit it? Step. Well, this is exactly. So what did I do? I just went to one of my pages and did a strike because I knew I could get good gear from it. Like, <laughs> cause I knew it was something yeah, that, that I wasn't going to waste quest my time line to on. get you up to 690 is like the, is the best thing for you to do. Cause when you're done, all your gear will be 690. Yeah. So it'll be a bunch of blues, but then it'll get you to 690 and then all your 
stuff from there will be legendary or whatnot. But yeah, yeah. So I went and did like a Nightfall strike or a Vanguard strike or I whatever what it was. They're going to do when the free to play version comes out. What I really would like, I would really like them. Number one, I need a keyboard shortcut to get the pursuits because it's fucking annoying that you have to go to your map and then you have yes. to key over to yes, it. it. It is super fucking annoying. That was like an update or two ago. I don't know. They just borked it because you used to be able to get there much quicker. Hmm. I'm surprised you can't like, hit like P or something. On yeah, your and you can't even. I went into the keys. You can't even set a key to a hotkey for it. That seems it's, like poor planning on their yeah, part. It's dumb. I don't know what the hell's up with that. But like, I would just like it to be redesigned. It's just a bad quest log. I, I would like it to sort stuff by like, hey, do this mission because you're the closest to getting a reward from this one. Or you like, know what I mean? or even like, if you could sort it. So like you can mm-hmm. sort it, but you can only sort it by like the type. And well, like, that's what I mean. Sorry, like if you could but, sort it to at least be like you said, either what's the closest thing that is almost done? Like I need to do something like quick to finish this quest line off, or what's the quest, or what's my pursuit, or whatever that's going to help me. Yeah, it should it should recommend most, you, you? You know what I mean? Like I don't know a handful of them to work on. Right. To, like, reduce the clutter. And it's like, okay, these ones, you're the closest to getting, A, an exotic gun here, you know, B, uh, like, a ship, or C, like, something else, and just kind of, like, prioritize a couple of them. And it's like, okay, it's like, yes, I can do strikes, I can do the raid, I can, you know, do adventures, heroic, public events, you know, these other secret missions and whatnot. You don't get, you know, you don't get overwhelmed by trying to decide what are the ten things to do. It's like, hey, do this mission, and you, you know this is going to get you this exotic, and you're this, you know, prioritize yep. it by like how actually close you are to the reward. Yeah, no, that would be really helpful because I'm I not going to lie. Like, I jumped in, I got really overwhelmed with how many pursuits and not really knowing where to start, and I almost just jumped out because I was like, eh, I don't really know if I want to deal with this yeah, like, right now. It would be a different story if you logged in and I was on, or Verlin was on, or someone was on that could be like, hey, you need to do this. Yeah, and, the and other we thing know too it is because like, I didn't we, have all night either. Like, yeah. so I kind of jumped on. Like, I'm like, I have an hour. Like, but the I'll, thing is, is like, you know, we have we have the recommendation on what you should do because we're the ones who already wasted time doing it, totally. right? Yeah, because like we a, said before, like Destiny Two is easily a game that if you're not kind of using your time wisely, it's a game you can go in and do absolutely fucking nothing. It's a lot of fun. Like still, you're gonna have but fun. You're not but gonna it's like you're not moving power, forward at all really, right? Yeah, your power level's not gonna go up. You're not gonna no. be getting a cool new exotic gun that you really should be working towards, you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, that so, no, I hope, I, like I, I said, I it, was, it was still fun. I mean I'll definitely I it's still Destiny have, 2. I'm gonna keep playing it, but I, uh, I swear they have to be revamping that for when it has that free to play version. Yeah, I I guess we will find out. Yeah, uh, moving along. Yeah. Let's get into the news. Do, 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 do. The news and stuff. Um, Hey, back to Pokemon Go. <laughs> Team Rocket and Shadow Pokemon added to Blasting Pokemon Go. Off at the speed of I haven't seen any of these. Apparently, Team Rocket's taken over like Pokestops and really? like, it initiates a battle. Yeah. And then interesting, you get, and then you get can catch like a shadow Pokemon, which needs to be purified, and hmm. all this nonsense. I haven't seen one of these yet. Like I don't know how prevalent they're supposed to be, huh? Or how often? Because there's like a Pokestops Pocus at my house, and I keep checking everyone's phone. I'm like, no, they're just they're just normal. That's pretty cool. So people were pretty excited about that. I think it was teased at the Pokemon like event. I don't know what the hell they call their yearly big event that just happened. So those guys, hmm. Niantic just killing it with the support for Pokemon Go, hence the giant crowds and people still playing. Yeah, I mean, I still think it's, it's fucking Pokemon, so people are... And that, too, Pokemon is Pokemon. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's got some staying power for sure. Um, so, Fortnite... Yeah, had like a huge event on the weekend, which I, I heard about this. Happened to uh, watch uh, a video. Thanks uh, to uh, oh man, I don't want to say his name. I'm gonna butcher it again. A friend in our Discord. Yeah, let's just <laughs> do that. <laughs> I don't want to offend by murdering his name. 
All right. But yeah, he shared a link in the Discord, and I went and checked out the video, and I'm like, that was pretty freaking awesome. So this was like Mecha versus Monster battle? Yeah, it was full full like Godzilla versus Power Ranger giant robot, like played out live, like during a match, and basically altered the map as they were battling and destroying the place. It literally changed the map, and it was awesome. It was so freaking cool. I'm like, wow. I'm like, this is something that like all open world games need to kind of like adopt, like on Destiny, like on Mars. Like, why don't, why doesn't like a giant, you know, cabal ship crash into the building there and then totally change the environment? Like, obviously, that's a lot of freaking work to implement this kind of stuff. And that's what these guys like spend a lot of their time working on all season. But, uh, yeah, I recommend you check out the link in the podcast show notes. Yeah. And watch the clip for yourself. It was, it's really cool. Everyone was going off that it's the best event that uh, Fortnite's ever had in game. Like talk about a really neat in game, like live event that like changes the game going forward. It was, it was pretty incredible actually. That's really neat. Yeah. It was cool. I watched the video. I was like, I was like literally blown away. That type of shit is really neat no, when, it's when awesome. done and when it works and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, that's wild. It, it's so cool. And seriously, you know, as much as Fortnite aped the Battle Royale mechanic from another game, other games should ape this, like, you know, world-changing type of events. Yeah, like, I mean, you know, it like, sounds like a little bit like um, Apex was kind of doing this a little bit, but not nearly to the same extent. No, this right? is like, watch the clip, man. It's, like, huge. Yeah. It's cool. So neat. Stadia. 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 Stadia Stadia Pro isn't Netflix for games, Google insists. It's more like Xbox Live Gold or PlayStation Plus. Yeah. They had an AMA on Reddit. And uh, basically, they're like, no, we're not like a Netflix. We're more like like these guys. And they clarified, like, messaging about how, you know, like, similar to xbox and playstation psn um plus like when you're subscribed you get the games for that month you know you unsubscribe you lose lose access access but you resubscribe you get access back to all the games that you had accumulated during your subscription or at least added to your account um you know yeah i mean it which I I don't know if that's good for it or bad for it to be to be totally honest with you. And because... and the gist was that you don't have to subscribe. Yeah. You know, you just buy right. games and play them and stream them because people seem to be really goddamn confused at what Stadia is, even though they've said multiple times everywhere what's going on. Yeah, it is literally just like a platform, but instead of it sitting under your TV, it's in the cloud, and you buy games just like you would your PlayStation or your Xbox, and then you just play them on Stadia. Like that's. There you go. Like, wonder, it's that simple. I wonder um, if they're going to be at PAX. I don't know. I would think. It would make sense. It's like the biggest convention before its launch. You would think, but but who knows? Um, I mean, you know. I'd like to get people's hands on it. Yeah, I would I would like to get hands on with it for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. I haven't heard anything about betas or anything yet. I won't lie. There though, was like, like a for, kind of beta last year. For me... Personally, I am a little gun shy with paying full price money for my video games. And then if yeah, it's kind Google of decides to like down the road, like, hey, guys, we don't think that this is a viable thing for us. We're going to kill it. And now you, it's just it's gone and there's there goes your games. Not to say that like steam or if or or epic store was to go away that wouldn't be a same the same problem but it just feels a little worse because google has a track record of like cratering their projects when they don't seem to make any money they like they're very good at at coming up with ideas and they're not necessarily good at following through especially if they don't think that they're doing you know, I mean, look at Hangouts for crying out loud. Hey, Hangouts is amazing. It's going to be the new thing. And then two, three years later, they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to like kill Hangouts and we're going to move forward with this other thing and so on and so forth. So 
that's where I kind of worry about it. Like if it's like, I would be more interested in this if it was actually a subscription base that got me games to play while I was subscribed, because then at least I don't own anything. I'm not putting out like $60 for all these games that I'm buying on the platform. And then if it goes away, well, it goes away. You, you know what I yeah. mean? Like it's it's just like Xbox Live. I think or, they've sorry, said like, that you'll always have access to your games, but I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, what what happens if if the if they decide like they're not going to stream them anymore? How are they going to give you access to them? Like if they, you know what I'm saying? Like if they decide Stadia isn't a thing making them money, are they just going to shut it all off and like? But they're still going to leave it up for the people that own those games like that's where it gets a little bit weird right yeah <coughs> well anyway. so it, i'm like i said i'm super interested about it my I internet at home I really hope isn't packs. good enough i don't think to to have it as a viable thing all the time because like if my wife's streaming netflix and then i'm trying to play video games off of my internet connection as well like yeah <laughs> i guess time will tell yeah um, this next story is kind of funny. Um, Twitch streamer shuts down trolls and sets boundaries in the best way. Um, I guess she had a clip that went viral like last week. Um, yeah. What's her name? Somebody here? wanted to see her feet. Amber Paladin Amber Wadham, 20 year old variety streamer from Australia. Yeah. Uh, she, it's Paladin <laughs> Amber. She's a yeah, streamer. So, so not only is she like awesome, she has an Australian accent, which makes her super cute. And she's not bad looking to boot, but she's quite entertaining and that she does like these amazing, like breaking news, like multicam cuts. Like her stream is like pretty amazingly produced or she's got it set up really cool. And she just had these clips where basically she's like telling viewers to like fuck off. Like, no, I don't want to sleep with you. I never will want to sleep with you. Don't touch me if you see me in public. But she does it in the best ways. Yeah. Like, she has two clips in the last week that have gone, like, pretty super viral. And she's she's pretty amazing. Yeah, her... I almost wonder if... She must have come across, like, things that she, she knew. And she must have created, like, a... uh almost like the video like so that she could just do it and like hit the play button on it when it like when people ask about it or you know what i mean like that's kind of because like i'm looking at her like the foot video and like it's got like a whole like call now visa like 1995 like it's this whole thing right where she like makes fun of it but like it yeah it's it's really well done yeah she's pretty great and and you know what respect to her telling fucking people to fuck off and she's not like your like cleavage titty streamer like she's streaming in like on her merits like being entertainment entertaining and not like (laughs) giving in to the freaking crowd you know what i mean i don't know what oh i don't even want to get into this right now with you but i don't understand if you're going to show cleavage what that has to do with anything no but there's so many streamers that make a name for themselves by being half naked on stream and they suck and they're not entertaining so don't watch them i don't i don't, I don't watch wh- them so right but i don't it's, understand it's, why why we're calling them titty street like who cares like what is like because there's doing a their whole thing. there's a whole demographic of female streamers that take advantage of these people Whereas I she's like it setting, is completely she's up like to them to watch them. But like, how are they this, taking but advantage that's, of but anything? That's what makes this chick awesome is that she like tells them how it is and doesn't like take advantage of their naivety by taking their donations and all that nonsense. She's like, no, like this is not cool, man. Like, just be normal. Anyway, my whole thing is, is man, is like you do you if you want to show. Well, that's true. Stream, There's nothing wrong do with you. that. But I that's think... my point. Like, I'm not going to sit here and shame somebody because they have a great rack and they want to show it off and maybe make some money off it. Like, fuck, more power to you. Um, I, I'm just saying. Like, I think that what this chick Palette and Amber's done is great. Like, I I love yeah, the way that she's, she's, she's definitely pretty awesome. going about this. But I'm just saying, like, I also don't think that like we need to be shaming anybody if they've got assets that they feel that they can use to hopefully 
make money or make a stream. If if I want to watch them, it's, great. If I it's, don't, it's fine. Then just, who cares? I just right. I just don't like people that take advantage of people. And I don't think that anybody's taking advantage of anybody because nobody's forcing anybody to watch those streams. Yeah. So the people with insecurities and mental issues and this and that, they get played. Like, they get played by those type of people. I just think I just think it's not right. But whatever. I. I don't agree with that statement at all. But anyways, that's a conversation for another day. But yeah, anyway, um, check out the link. Yeah. She's freaking hilarious. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, this next link is going to be dead. Because uh, if you haven't seen it yet, it's probably already been taken down. The Marvel's Avengers gameplay footage leaked from Comic-Con. Yep, I did manage to watch it before the link disappeared. I did watch it. Like you said, of course, it did disappear. It made me feel a little bit better about it. But that game still, in my opinion, does not look great. I think it It, looks cool. I think it looks a lot better than the footage that they show or the the trailer that they showed at E3 to the public. That's for sure. I just Um, don't know why they don't show this goddamn footage already. Well, I actually think they're doing a like. I think that by them not showing it, they're hurting themselves. More. That's what I mean. Like, just show this goddamn footage because there's so many mixed messages and like, there's a lot of posts here. Like, people are like, "Oh, I saw the footage and this, you know, my hype level's huge." Or, "Oh, this look actually looks good. I didn't know how I felt about it before, but now I feel like good about it." And it's like, just show the goddamn footage. Yeah, I. Except for it was exclusive in three, which was over a month ago, and now it's exclusive at Comic Con. It's like okay. Like, I get that they want to do something, like, cool for the people that showed up to Comic-Con and spent the money and so on and so forth, like, and they want to make them feel like they're a part of something, and, like, I get that, that's cool, but by not showing the gameplay footage and only showing that terrible trailer that they showed at E3, I... You let the message get out of... Yeah. You let the internet control the message. Totally. Totally. Like... And that's the deadliest thing. Even if you were to cut, like, that whole, like, the whole video gameplay up... And even if you were to cut it up into the pieces, because, like, in the video, it's, like, it's essentially split up between all the characters. Like, there's a, there's a chunk where you're, where you're seeing the, the, the player play as Iron Man. You're, you see, like, some Thor gameplay. You see some Black Widow gameplay. You're seeing the Hulk. Like, you're seeing all these different characters. You see Captain America. Like, so you're kind of seeing how each of them plays. Um, cause, like, we've already been told, like, this is essentially the beginning of, of the game. Um, so it's like a, a cool way for people to kind of be able to, you know, sort of see all of the different Avengers and how they play and stuff. So like, even if you were to like cut that up into like little pieces and be like, Hey, check out, like, this is the Hulk gameplay. Like, you know what I mean? Like you could, I just, you could do something better than what they've done with it. And cause like it definitely looks a lot better. Like, yeah. like when I saw that, I went like, Okay. Okay, I, I, f- I at least feel a little bit more comfortable about where this game is going. <laughs> the funny thing about the whole time I was watching the clip it was just like, man, Thor just straight up murdered those guys. Yeah, I totally <laughs> agree. Did you see the Hulk too? <sighs> Holy crap, man. Oh, yeah, Hulk like put it's people like, in wheelchairs whoa. and murdered them. <sighs> yeah, he put them in wheelchairs after he like, oh, yeah. He put their ghosts in wheelchairs, man. Like... <laughs> He freaking like grabs a whole truck and like drops it on that one guy's head. Like like yeah, it's uh I know. They poor, I definitely poor bad that. guys showed up to work on the wrong day. Yeah, definitely, yeah, uh, definitely funny. What but yeah, it was think, like what are you thinking? I don't I don't know. So you're not a superhero, a you don't go up against silly. superheroes. It's real simple. <laughs> I guess somebody told them that, hey man, these guns, these guns are, you know, gonna hurt the superheroes. Yeah. Idiots. <laughs> yeah. It looks I think it looks cool. I'm I'm excited. I, I like I, I said, wonder I'm if a it's gonna go to PAX too after I saw that. Um I hope they're gonna have it at PAX. I hope we get to play it at PAX. I would I would like I really I d- I at least want it. I don't know. I want if it's at PAX, I'm sure it's just the same freaking or a newer yeah, newer I'm theater sure demo. Be. I don't know. Maybe they're maybe they're planning on holding off till Gamescom to release the the gameplay. Oh, maybe. Like maybe that's the idea. I, they should have done it by now. But whatever. <laughs> this is my opinion. Yep. What do I know? 
I don't know anything. Pew, 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 pew. This week in Destiny. Destiny. I'll be quick. For those of you who hate Destiny, <laughs> since Dane already kind of talked about it. Uh, next week launches the Solstice of Heroes event, uh, which lets you earn your first set of the new Armor 2.0 set. Uh, there's new ships, new event, new gear. It's super mega grindy end of the year event that, that, that will take us into Shadow Keep. Um, yep. Anyway, yeah. Hopefully it's not too grindy because last year was super grindy and I was just like, nope. But yeah. I don't think I was as into Destiny this time last year as I w- was as I am this year. So we'll see. I don't know if you've ever been this into Destiny. You're pretty hardcore into it right now. Yeah, it's been pretty goddamn good lately. Yeah, fair enough. Nintendo news. Uh, Nintendo will fix Joy-Cons for free and offer uh, refunds, apparently, uh, from a leaked uh, internal memo obtained by Vice. Nintendo's... Uh, you know, policy towards Joy-Con drift is to offer free repair, and apparently they're going to offer refunds to people who had sent them in and paid, like, the $40 to, uh, like, if you're out really? of warranty, it was 40 bucks to get your Joy-Con repaired. Ooh. If you're under warranty, wow. you had to pay for shipping, uh, which I think they only charge, like, 4 bucks or something like that, but, yeah, right. I guess this is ahead of uh, a class action lawsuit that was getting filed, so I'm going to guess that that's going to get thrown out the window now since they're essentially going to be doing free repairs and offering refunds for people who paid. So it's be better if they just fix the problem. Smooth move, Nintendo. Yeah, I don't like, I don't know what the problem is. Cause I've, that's the thing is like this, this has been a huge story the last week or so people mm-hmm. have had joystick joy cons repaired and have the drift return. Yeah, it sounds so. like it's an issue with the way that they're designed, like from the beginning, though. Mm-hmm. Like, apparently, it sounds like there's like the sensor, or whatever, underneath that like, gets dust or dirt. Like, they didn't do a very good job of protecting those areas. So, it's so like, like dust you... or dirt gets in, like, in there, and then it kind of gets up inside. And even though there's not any pressure on the actual, like, analog stick, that just it that little bit is. is is enough mm-hmm. to, like, cause the sensor to think that they're yeah is. like i've had i've had the drift yeah and when i've had it happen i just kind of like rotate the and the you know the analog stick around in like circles a couple times and then it goes away right so that makes sense so, so it's like dust or something in there but yeah. like i wonder if this is something from like just the launch joy cons or like say you bought like the new say the new colors they just announced are those like ones like that don't have the drift or won't ever get the drift because they've been modified. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. So, uh, well, get on Nintendo. Maybe I'll look it into sucks that sending my controllers. A, a fear of a lawsuit really forced them into this. Like, I don't. I I think that the part of this that I think sucks is that people have been bitching freaking about it for out a while. about this for a long time. And it was only, you know, for fear of this becoming a big, like, cluster and getting on the news and everything else that they were like, oh, no, no, okay, okay, guys, well, let's, uh, let's, let's try and, you know, get this back under control and, and, and let's, let's, let's do the right thing here and do all this. Like, I, I think at the beginning, if they would have came out right off the bat and been like, hey, if this is a problem, like, let us know, we'll get it sorted. Don't worry about it. I think that would have like this wouldn't we wouldn't be reading this story today. You, you know what I mean? Because like, yeah. they would have just sorted it out, and that would have been that. Um, uh, yeah. I just think it's shitty when companies like you have to f- essentially force their hand. Yeah, like this. it's like shitty that Microsoft. It's not like they're not making fucking money hand over fist with all this shit. Like you know the Joy Cons, they're fucking seventy. Like what are they eighty dollars a pair expensive. in Canada? Like yeah. they're expensive. They're not cheap. Like, you know, it'd be one thing if they were like 40 bucks or, you know, if you could buy mm-hmm. one, if you could buy one at a time or something and you were like 25 bucks or 30 bucks or something, I'd be like, okay, well, whatever. Like you use it, you get the drift, it becomes a huge problem. Fucking throw it away and get a new one. Like, but when they're $80 for a pair, like that's brutal. Um, well, that's so, yeah. that HD I mean, rumble. They just have so much technology. Totally. 
built and in. And I mean, and it's so important that they left it out in the Switch Lite. They're so, the I mean, most clearly advanced that's... controller on the planet. Yeah, like, so clearly that'll be a feature that everybody's going to be using soon. It's so advanced that you can't plug ever. a freaking headset into them and listen to audio at the same time as... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. Moving on. A uh, new Pokemon Masters uh, game for mobile. Trailer shows right, up co-op their... gameplay. Okay. This is that one from DNA and D- Game Freak, which is like the battle-centric Pokemon game. Mm-hmm. Uh, They're three-on-three battle game. I don't really care about the trailer. I put the story in the timeline because you can pre-register for the game on Apple and iOS. Oh, okay. Not in Canada. And apparently word on the street is that it's going to be releasing August 29th. So, packs in the weekend. U.S., but not in Canada. I don't know if it's just on the store right now. Maybe because it's just, you know, they haven't added. Or is it. this going to be one of those weird things where we're going to have to wait like a few months? Because like, what was that other uh, game? Tringalia uh, Lost. Yeah, like that didn't come out here for like six months later. Yeah, like it was. It was a long time. That'd be dumb. So hopefully, I mean, I don't really care, but. For the people that are interested in this, I hope that it at least comes out sort of decent time. Yeah, it doesn't even show up in the store, but I think it's just a, maybe it's just a, just a region thing right now because they just added it recently. Right. So yeah, if you're in the US, lucky bastards, you can pre, re, pre-register. None of that really means anything, but whatever. Yeah. yeah. I, don't know, I, 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 I don't know if I really care for that for that game especially with the new with sword and shield coming up prim and proper pokemon on switch yeah um xbox news xbox one's dashboard is getting another redesign and cortana is out the window thrown in the triggity old trash xbox voice commands roll out to xbox insiders Uh, okay i know that Brian, you've uh, you you sent me on the Twitters. <laughs> he tagged you this. I saw this yeah. photo, and I honestly thought it looked like the PlayStation Four. It uh, my okay. So judging from one picture, one picture. So I'm 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 honestly hoping that I don't know, but based off of this photo. It still looks like a giant cluster. Like it's like you got games along the top, you've got discover things in the middle, you got like your name, you've got like it's just it's this weird tile thing. Like I just want I just want it to be like hell man. Friggin' Epic Game Store, like hell, their Xbox app on PC is better. You know, you've got your, you got you got the stuff at the top. I you don't got your know game about pass. That. You got your social, you got your store, and you've just got games. Like you, you just you just click on it, they're right there. Boom. Not a big deal. These are all your games. Like the games that are installed, they're on the left. And you just hit and you just hit like to me it's 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 better. Like like to me this just makes sense. Like I can see my games that are installed on the left hand side. I'll just click the play button and I play them. I, like and then at the top it's got the different like the different sections with the game pass the social the store that all makes sense I can go into each of those and like see stuff and whatever like that all I get like that to me so much more functional judging by their photo and again like I'm way early on this who knows what it'll finally come out and be like but judging by that one photo it's like they're doing the exact same thing they're doing right now just in a different order ish. So I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping that it's going to be better. I think it looks nice. It looks very, to be honest, I looks like the PlayStation four interface at first glance. It kind of does, but like I said, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I don't, I don't like it. There's not enough that I get to look at to really tell. Yeah. Yeah. The trick. It's you my know, only yeah. issue with the Xbox dashboard is that just sometimes it's just so laggy. Even on a, oh, it's, on, it's even on a one X. Laggy. Yeah. It just needs to be snappier. That's my only issue. Oh, with it. totally. I don't understand why it's that laggy. I mean, like, to be honest, the, the PlayStation one is starting to get laggy as well. 
Um, especially if you like pull up your like like whatever the you don't um, have a pro like right? the social feed. No, I don't have the pro. Yeah, that's probably your um, problem right there. Like I pull up the social feed though, and it's like. Like when I, I remember when I first got it, my social feed was like bloop, and there was like it was quick. Like the it, PS4 has a lot of issues when it comes to the friends list and social stuff. Like yeah. There's straight up games that are broken if you like have over a hundred friends. Oh really? Yeah, I don't have that problem. So, um, but yeah, so we'll see. I'm I'm really hopeful. I'm like I would love for for the Xbox to to get like their shit together if you will like i i, I, like I don't understand just how you know that is literally your entire company is based on building interfaces for things and yet you so badly screwed up the xbox one um so here's hoping here's mm-hmm. hoping um public service announcements we don't have any but we do kind of have one Epic Game Store free games this week when the store or, or when the the show goes live. Uh, it's going to be Moonlighter and this War oh, of Mine. Oh, that's sweet. Moonlighter, play Moonlighter. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. So those are Limbo's just ending. Right. By the time this goes live, and then Moonlighter and this War of Mine are the free free to play games or free to own games on Epic Game Store. Yeah, I mean, letter sweet. Oh. I got it on PS4. Also, if you have Twitch Prime, don't forget to uh, log in and grab your Twitch Prime games. Oh, yeah. I don't even know what those are. We already went over those, so I guess it's going to be next week we'll have new. Yeah, there's there's some like uh, Apex Legends skins and a bunch of other stuff as well. Yeah, I guess that's next right week is going to be the PlayStation Plus and Xbox games with gold updates. Yeah. Uh, so. Free for all. Three, four, oh. Here I am sitting uh, on the Discord being like, man, Comic-Con's okay. There's, you know, you can really feel the Marvel, uh, you know, <laughs> like non-presence. Boy, was I wrong. I thought they weren't there like last year. I just assumed they weren't there again because last year they weren't there. But mm-hmm. Boy, was I wrong. They were there and they freaking like whipped out their, you know, they, they undid the zipper and whipped it all out. <laughs> Yeah, they they're showing off a ton of news. Yeah, it's like, so, I mean, do we do we, let's let's quickly like roll through sort of they they sh- they showed off phase four, uh, starting with Black Widow, a May first, twenty twenty, followed by the Falcon and the Winter Soldier television show on Disney Plus in fall twenty twenty. Uh, then we've got the Eternals coming November sixth, twenty twenty. And then we've got February 12th, 2021, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, which, spoiler alert, that's the Mandarin. Mm -hmm. Uh, Marvel Studios is doing WandaVision, which is going to be coming out on Disney Plus in spring of 2021. May 7th, 2021, very excited about this. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Oh yeah, that's um, awesome. followed by Loki on Disney Plus coming spring 2021, summer 2021. That we're getting a Marvel Studios What If, and that's an animated Disney series. Plus. Yeah, and then we're getting Hawkeye on Disney Plus in fall of 2021, followed by November 5th, 2021. Thor, Love and Thunder. Yeah. That's so that's going to be everything in the lineup. phase in the phase 4 that they announced. Of course, there's like a whole bunch of other interesting tidbits here and there and everywhere else. Um who's playing what and like some of these are like looking rad. Some of this stuff is going to be so cool. Especially the, the Disney excited. Plus stuff is going to be pretty freaking sweet. Yeah. The uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier I think is going to be really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, Shang Chi is super neat. Uh, Canadian actor, which is really really cool that he's going to be playing uh, Shmi Lao in the in the new Shang Chi. So he'll be like the the kind of the main character there. Um, yeah, like just Wandavision looks cool. 
Um, I mean, I'm obviously as a huge Doctor Strange fan, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. They're saying that is going to be the first scary MCU film. Uh, apparently it's filmed. Hmm. It's going to be, have a very gothic horror tone, um, which is awesome because like, obviously there's been tons of different arcs in the comics and stuff like that. Um, but my, like some more of my favorite Dr. Strange arcs have always kind of been the more like darker kind of grounded and like really almost spawn esque. Actually, there's been a few arcs that have been kind of like that, which has been really cool. Yeah. Um, some of the other stuff that's not necessarily part of the fourth, like, oh yeah, uh, they, they talked a little bit about like MCU phase five and beyond. Um, they did say that they will be making a blade movie, yeah, which I'm really excited yeah, for I'm because pretty excited for that too. The actor that they got, yes. to, he's awesome. Yeah. Um, they did say there's going to be a fan, they're rebooting fantastic four, um, there's, they have said there's going to be sequels for the Black Panther, uh, sequels for Captain Marvel and Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, it doesn't look like, um, uh, they did, they didn't really give, uh, like dates as far as some of that stuff. Or, sorry, they gave, they gave three dates. Here. Yeah, they gave three dates, but they didn't say which films were going to be at those dates. Guardians were in, is like, definitely after Thor. Uh, James Gunn has come out and said that. Yeah, so in, so like Maher, is this Mahershala? Yes, Maher Mahershala Ali. Yeah, he's gonna be joining the MCU as Blade, which is fucking so cool. Um, yeah. So like he played, uh, he was on the the Marvel uh, Luke Cage. Yes, he played he played the villain in Luke Cage, and he killed it. Um, I mean, he is an Oscar winning actor, so. I think I think he'll be an awesome blade. Very very excited about I mean, that. Isn't that HBO series. Yeah, I don't think I watched that one. Which one so. is it? What's that series called? It's, I've totally escaped the name of me. The crime one. I don't know. Oh, True he Detective. Was, he was, right. He was on True Detective season three. Yes, he was awesome. Right, there. man. I need to. I need He's to a watch dope that. actor. Yeah. So so yeah, a lot of big news. Um. They also mentioned that Natalie Portman is going to become the female Thor in Thor Love and Thunder, which I think is super cool to be taking on that storyline mm. of female Thor. Like, I just think that's really, really cool. Um, yeah, no, all, all the stuff, like, I think they're making a lot of the right moves. Um, so make another $18 billion. Oh. Man. So being Comic Con, there's tons of trailers for new stuff like Picard, Top Gun, the HBO Watchmen series. Uh, I haven't actually watched the Watchmen trailer yet. Yeah. I did watch that's, the the Picard and the and the other one. But that comes out but, this fall, doesn't it? I think. Yeah, they also showed off the first trailer for the reboot of the Golden Compass. Oh. The name is completely escaping me. It has right a now. weird name, doesn't it? It's yeah, strange. it's because it's actually from the books. Um, because the books were, uh, hold on. What's it called? Remake. I don't know. I didn't like the Golden Compass. At all. Yeah. So, hmm, what is it freaking called now? The sucky movie that Dane can't remember the sucky name to. No, HBO is redoing it. It looks fucking incredible. Shut they're up, do, they're redoing the series. Oh, oh so serious. it's an HBO series. Yes. Okay, they, well, that's that, what I'm saying. That like, might actually be good then. They're re like they're rebooting it, and it looks crazy. Um, it looks so good. That's that's what I'm saying. Um, yes, his dark materials. That's it. Is what it's called is the upcoming it's a bbc one and hbo collaboration together and it looks awesome it looks like the way that the the movie the first movie should have been which was dark angry and touches on a lot of shit that the like the first movie completely washed aside and didn't even touch on uh and they're they're doing like the books proper it looks like this time oh jeez which yeah it looks and there's good actors in it. Awesome. It looks so good. Um yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, dude. So, like, the cast is... Yeah, the cast looks phenomenal. Yeah, like I said. <laughs> so, it, um, yeah. James McAvoy's in it. Ruth Wilson's in it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's, I was... This might actually make me sign up for HBO for a bit. Uh... We'll see. Uh, my wife and I both watched the trailer and we went, oh, shit, yeah. So Daphne Keene, Ruth Wilson, James McAvoy, Clark Peters. If it's HBO, oh, yeah. it'll be good. HBO's yeah. dope. So, so, yeah. So that's some pretty cool stuff came out of... Uh, and we got a trailer for The Witcher, which looks fucking oh, awesome. Oh, 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 it looks so good. Uh, I told you. I didn't. I, I said it looked good before, too. I think I think Henry Cavill is a he fits surprisingly well like um I think the one thing I worry about though is that I think a lot of people who are who played the games and love the games are going to go into this not realizing that these are based off the books yeah which is not fine, the games fine. um and they're going to go in and be like man Yennefer she seems different and what is going on with Triss like she seems totally different because yeah. a lot of that stuff got changed pretty heavily, especially in the first like Witcher game. Um, and it was quite different from the book. And then it sounds like as the games went on, they, st- they leaned more back towards the book. Um, so it'll be interesting to see the internet get angry about all the shit that they think should be in it because it's based on a video game when it's actually based on a book. But Either way, I think it looks fucking awesome. Yeah, it looks cool. Uh, and that'll be coming out on Netflix. So I believe that's this fall, right? Like later on I this think year. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know that they gave a actual like date. So but expected they've said, to release late 2019. Yeah, so probably later on this year. But it looks so cool. Uh, that is probably my my most excited for television show coming up. Um, very very cool. Yeah. So that was that was nice. Yeah. I'm excited. Nice surprise for sure. Uh and then you saw I take it you saw the Lion King? I did. The live action slash CG The Lion King. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I didn't love it. No. You know, it's weird. Um so <laughs> When when they made when they made when they read it Aladdin, I kind of wanted them to take the animated film and I kind of wanted them to more or less remake it just with real people, right? Yeah, that was kind of what I hoped. Like follow the script, do what pretty we much already like loved storyboard and... it exactly, but just do it with real people. Yeah. Um, but they didn't, and they changed some stuff, and and like initially, I was. A little, like, you know, like I said, you can go back and, like, I I ended up enjoying it, but, you know, I had some thoughts. Um, The crazy thing is, is that the Lion King almost does that. Exactly what you wanted, but then it's... Almost. Almost. Like, it's it's very close. Um, It's... It's like they obviously they did change a few things here and there to make it a little bit more grounded, to, to make it seem a little bit more, you know, believable, if you will, from obviously the animated one. Um, but I will say, uh, both my wife and I noticed this and like part of it, I wasn't sure if it was the theater we were in, but I've like talked to some other people and they also found this as well. Uh, the music seemed really flat. It didn't seem like it had the depth of that original soundtrack. Like, it's really interesting to me. Going into this, I had been hearing people like rave about the music, like, oh wow, like the music is in this, and like Beyonce like does like like one of the songs and she plays one of the characters and like, oh, it's so great. And like I don't know, I like I like that that original soundtrack is an Oscar winning soundtrack. Like it freaking won awards back in the day, um, for that animated soundtrack. And it's incredible. It's it's so good. Um and they've redone the songs and stuff like that, and like it just the whole thing to me felt like it's fine. Don't get me wrong. It's it's the Lion King. It's it's like 
live action, if you will, which is a little bit weird, but it works like, and it, and it, and it's fine. Um, but it, it just kind of feels like, why? Yeah, I, I've seen the trailers. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm more, like, like way more than the other the ones. Animals like look like amazing. Like the animation yeah, and the CG looks amazing, but I'm just like, eh. They totally do. But the, the weird thing is, is that like the original is animated and you're watching a new one that's also animated. It, I don't know, like more than all of the other remakes that they've done so far, I felt like The Lion King was the one that I went like, huh, this felt really unneeded. Like, I, I don't know. Like, so I, they took like no risks that they probably should have changed more really, or try yeah, to make like, it I, more unique. I don't know. Like it, it just, to me, it just felt kind of soulless. Like, I, I don't know. Like, like I heard like, people complain the music that they was were just kind of like, eh. And like, I don't know, like so many of the, like so much of like, it's a musical. It's so much of the songs and everything are like supposed to have that power. And, and like, I don't know. Um, some of the voices I thought they nailed and they were like so good. Um, Seth Rogen as, as Pumba, I thought he just, he was great. I loved him. Like he kind of had a bit of that attitude and like the first time he talks, you're like, okay, well that doesn't sound like Pumba, but the attitude and the way that he talks, like it really works for the character. But then the guy that they got to play Timon, it it's like, he's close enough to the original, but he's not the original Mm-hmm. And the way that the attitude, like, I don't know, like, it was a weird thing, like, where to me, it was almost like, they would have been better off to get somebody that just like sounded more like, different than than the guy that they got. Like, I don't know, it just, yeah, I, out of all the remakes so far, for me, myself, this has probably been the biggest disappointment that I've seen. Um like it it just it kind of felt soulless the music felt like it didn't have the depth that the original songs do and it didn't have that i don't know it just it felt like it was missing something yeah. um, I heard we actually ch- talked I heard. to we we talked to the like manager of the theater cuz i was like did you guys forget to like turn on a subwoofer or something like it it like none of the music had punch like it just yeah. i don't know um so like what did he say and she, well, she was like, no, no, all of our music is like, all of our theaters are like pre set up and blah, blah, blah. You know, she, they get the line, right? Yeah. And I'm like, so is it just, do you mean to tell me it's just recorded like that? Like it just, it sounds that flat? Mm. And like, I don't know. It, we were going to watch it, but my so, daughter got freaked out from the trailer. So we're like, yeah, we're not yeah. going to go waste money and she's going to want to like leave. I will say, like, I'll probably watch it on demand. The guy that they chose to, to play scar not nearly as good not nearly as good that's that's always the problem with these things you're you're comparing them to no totally and and like i get that such an uphill battle but yeah totally but like like i said like if they would have i don't know like that was the thing like i said with with the aladdin thing like i kind of initially i wasn't sure about some of the changes and stuff that they made and i felt like they didn't um some of the plot holes. Like, see, we were kind of talking and, about And so on and so forth, right? In the Discord, we were kind of talking about, like, I just wish they just got Pixar to reanimate and have all the same songs, all the same voices, all the same acting, but basically like a remake, like Resident Evil 2 remake. But here's <laughs> Little Mermaid in Toy Story 4 Pixar quality graphics. Did you watch? See, you haven't seen Toy Story 4, have you? I haven't seen Toy, Toy Story 4, Story 4 no. visually is fucking insane how good it looks see and the thing for me though is that i i love like no, i like I hand animation love but if you're gonna hand they're not drawn gonna, 2d animation they're not gonna reanimate those shows in like super hd but like yeah can you imagine I mean, them just doing that with all the existing they were acting? filmed they were filmed in analog so the the possibility of them being able to up that is a lot easier than than the pixar yeah, stuff back not in the impossible. day no, um, yeah. For for me, I would like to see like a super high res hand drawn two D. Right now, I can't hear Dane at all. Do 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 do. I can do. see Rick, and I can hear him. 
and I can see him. <laughs> Strange uh, that the guy with the super fast internet has a problem. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's on your end. You're the one that was frozen. I <laughs> shut you up. You weren't frozen at all the whole time. This is stupid. Uh, which is kind of funny. Thing. It's and I even rebooted Skype's, my modem on my end. Fault. So yeah. Um, we never had that problem for years, and then just the last couple months. I know it's been weird. I don't know. What anyway, the deal Dean, is. I Yo. think that's an episode two hundred and fourteen in the gigabits and in your ear holes. Two fourteen. I forgot. 14. I forgot to do house cleaning at the top of the show, so we're gonna do that. Good job. We'll do that now. Actually, after we do our twitters, our sign offs. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Rick F No K R I C F. You can always come find me on Twitter at Dane Cody at D A Y N E C O D Y. Um, house cleaning, join the Discord in any browser. Type in bit.ly slash gap discord. Gap discord. G A P D I S C O R D. And join in on the offline antics. Well, no, they're online. They're just not podcast antics they're not on the show it's uh it's our it's our chat it's our discord us being goofs it's fun everyone's there do it do it do it and then of course we've even got some new people yeah. and they seem pretty cool so cool. you know um we're, we're taking a risk we're telling you to come check it out follow like subscribe facebook Tell your friends instagram smoke signal it to other people Twitter. if you need to what else is there Notes in class. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Yeah, we do the YouTube too. Well, not really. You could Morse code it out if you want. We're geekaholics everywhere. And then, of course, uh, rate and review the podcast on any sites uh, that allow that. Mainly the Apple uh, podcast app or um, iTunes. Does iTunes even exist anymore? I don't know. No, I think it's Apple Podcasts now. We're on Spotify. We're on... You can just Man, tell you. We're all over the place. Okay, Google. Play Geekaholics no, Anonymous never podcast. Works. I don't know what's wrong with that. I got to do something to fix that. Is it not anymore? Because I've definitely done it before. Yeah, I tried doing it the other day and it played some other garbage. I think I got to oh. fix something on the back end. Okay. Fixing those damn. Scrap that. Fix those damn back ends. It probably yes, does it work if you say the right magic phrase. But be like, yo, Google. What's up? Play me this stuff. Uh, I think that's about it, my friend. All right. Until next week, uh, we're out. Go kiss babies and read comics. By Fire Emblem, because that's what I'm going to be playing and totally talking about next week, big time. Eh. Yes. I'm waiting for the reviews first. It's The, the previews have been awesome. It's Fire Emblem, man. You suck. Hey, there's some, some bad Fire Emblem games. No, this Fire Emblem looks amazing. Dude, the Wii one was not great. The Wii sucks. <laughs> like I said, the Wii one was not great. Okay, all the 3DS ones on <laughs> have been amazing. Yes. And this one the looks... The first one was still by far the best, though. And this one looks amazing, so... Anyway. Yeah. Okay, we're out. Later. Peace. Peace.